Hello, viewers, if you're out there. Uh, welcome to another Master Monkey presentation. Uh, Today, the show is Beat Grinder. This is the equivalent, Master Monkey equivalent, of a music production show of the sort which might see but around the other channels. Uh, those who see in charge of the show around here, they have ten minds of their own. <laughs> And they are fast, they are faster than me actually. My fingers are faster than my brain. And uh So we're gonna get into that, just gonna play that. If you've never seen that on the show, that's kind of my specialty. Uh my bring in some we'll probably play with everything actually. That would be speed drumming. I'm gonna do a quick quick of the a quick version of the pad banger dojo routine, which is like couple of slides, so to speak. I'm going to do this on a couple of different venues so that people get it. I'm just trying to promote it as a performance form, you know? Like, finger drumming is a real thing, and it's kind of like, it's either treated as a joke, like the old tavern thing stuff, or it's in very quiet, private circles treated as a serious thing. Um, it's mostly among drummers, because there's some practice in it. Other kinds of drums, finger drumming is the only kind of drumming there is, right? Uh, that kind of thing, so... Um, I want to play with some other noisemakers. Um, uh, I haven't warmed up today, so I'll probably do that. And uh, Diablo, right? I said Diablo. D-J-A-B-L-O. Check out his... Uh, I think he's got a list coming up pretty soon. He's supposed to be... January, maybe December. DJ ABLO Diablo Beats. I think it's Italian or something. Anyways, we're modifying the audio around here so that I can get more more uh, noisemakers in the mix. Uh, by, not just by choice, but also by necessity. Don't have a big budget. I don't know, we're going to be bringing in some new equipment here though pretty soon. But one of the things I've skimped on a lot. I don't know. Just the light. Leaning into it, that gets painful. Um, oh, one of the things I really skimped on, I'm going to practice playing drums while I talk. That's a talent we need to work on. One of the things I really skimped on is the uh, audio interface. Uh, so I'm just reusing like a USB headset interface, I guess. Whatever. It works. I get a model channel in, that's good enough for this. Anyways, you know, uh, yeah. and Johnny Gooden suggests that we might get less noise if we, uh, the mic, uh, the mic up. If we use a cardioid mic, yes, probably should. I think this is a, what the hell is it? Omni. I think this is an Omni piece of code. Technica DR2000 looks omni to me, probably omni direction. But, um, yeah, so, anyways, uh, I don't even, I don't sing or anything like that much. Um, but I have been wanting to use vocal effects for stuff like, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, so I might be getting another mic in here, but, so actually, the crazy thing is all of this runs into this, oh, you can see everything now, almost everything. So up here is a DP008EX, which is not a mixer. It's a multi-track recorder. It's what I used to do before, uh, before I streamed. I used to just run it all of it into a tape recorder. Before I got into the streaming, I'm going to change the sound. started streaming, I used to record my shit on this, actually. So you get two live inputs, two mono inputts. Uh, those are nice. And, uh, and you get eight tracks for editing. I don't really do much editing, I just record eight tracks uh, live, you know, my way. And, uh, uh, yeah, it does kind of look like an SM57, I guess they'll kind of take after that. Is on me. Suckers are really loud. 
I was playing with it before I had a I had it on one side of a salad bowl basically it was, that was fun yes yeah, so I got the mic here only so that I can bring in other noisemakers like this which I've really been wanting to do I'll bring in more sound toys and stuff I'm really into that I've got lots of things that make noise circuit bent circuit bent speak and spell it's pretty wild a friend of mine recorded like a whole album of this <laughs> like that actual one it's got some unique damages anyway so I got two channels that's it I got two live channels and a mono out so and one of them is coming out of the 202 hello Welcome. I just can't live without that. It's like my security blanket. And the other one's coming out of the 404. These are the two most capable endpoints I have. <laughs> capable in terms of like what they can do. And I'm not talking through the 404 right now, actually, because it has a mic input. Uh, so that gives me three inputs, two mono inputs on the 404 and a mic input. And so that's like a little mixer to me, and I treat it that way. And that gets one of the channels on the DP. The 202 is treated the same way. It has two inputs and one output, so I treat it like a mixer, and that gets the other channel. Um, the micro boot goes into the... micro boot goes into the 202, and the oscillators are turned off. That's why when I press a key, you don't hear anything. Right, maybe a little because I got the distortion on. Yeah, that's a clever trick, uh, yeah, I know. So, here, I'll turn this down, just so it's obvious that a key is actually playing. But you don't hear anything, because all the oscillators up here are, turn, this is the oscillator section. Man, I should have, like, a zoom thing. The oscillator section, all the oscillator volumes are turned down. So, it's playing a silent note. Why would it be doing that? Well, because the Akai MPX-8 here, being used as a sample player only, not as any kind of controller, the audio output, also mono, goes into, check this out, there's an audio input on the micro boot. Yes, isn't that awesome? It's amazing. And so you can run it through the LFOs, filters, all that crap. Um, of course, you would be hearing the oscillators, except they are turned down. So this allows me to play the, play the samples, the drum samples, which I'm using as a drum machine, basically, that I operate manually. Because I'm better than any drum machine. Because <laughs> uh, drum machines don't have a jazz button. There should be like a button and you hit it and it just magically becomes creative. They can't do that. That's why we have musicians. Um, so... Okay, so... Anyways, the cool part is I can do wild stuff with the... If you've got this combination or you got a brute... Micro brute or mini brute... Uh, and you haven't thought about running your your schnoz through the through this, so really consider it. I mean, another synth might be cool, but um, for drums, it is wild. I'll play, I'll play, play with it a little bit. Well, let's drum break here. We're going to have a little drum time. Welcome to Master. 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 Welcome to Master.
that so you guys would see that the envelope does apply. Right? So I've got an end gate right now, so it just comes straight through. And i got to remember not to lean over because I'm covering up the drums. That's kind of my signature is these drums. Yeah, and I don't know how many people are in the stream, but if there's anyone but Johnny Gooden out there and you don't know, yes, I am the fastest finger drummer in the world. I'm just messing around here. If you're faster, or you think Arab's faster, well, <laughs> Arab can speak for himself, but uh, if you think you're faster, then come in here and show me. <laughs> but you're not. Uh, if you're David Fingers Haynes, Never mind. It's not about speed when it comes to fingers and hands. It's about finesse. All right. So also more fun. You can run it through the LFOs, which is wild. You don't see it, but I got the LFOs off. Uh, quick primer on the LFOs. Oh, I do have kind of a. Hey, that's kind of like a zoom. All right. Quick primer on the LFOs on the on your micro boot. Uh, you got your mod wheel over here. Uh, mod can apply either to LFO or cutoff, which is cool, so I'm going to turn up an oscillator so we got something I'm mess with. Uh, that's a nice one. Okay. Uh, so it can apply either to the cutoff, it's like this, right, so I can move the cutoff with my hand there, or I can move it with the mod wheel, like this. See? Right. So, uh, you your choice. Personally, I, I, I like the filter. I use this when I, when I do the filter. Screw it around, but I hate to filter. Screw. Of course, who doesn't? Well, if you're going to do that, I grab up here. Because you're going to want the res button anyway. The resonance is right next to it, so in the filter section here. So, uh, so since you're going to want you're going to want the resonance handy, you're going to I mean, might as well just use this as the filter. Uh, so that that means I just uh, I just leave the mod wheel set to LFO now. That means when you're doing this, what you're really applying is how much LFO there's going to be here. Right? So as I turn the mod wheel up, I get more and more LFO. How much LFO? Well, it depends on the setting of this amount right next to the LFO right here. So the amount is set to 50%. Right now. If I set it all the way up, um, and with the mod wheel down, you still don't hear anything. See? So like I move the amount, the LFO amount, it's at the bottom, no change. It's at the top, no change. Right? because the model goes all the way down. So what you do, when people say to do, they say, well, set your LFO amount all the way up and set the mod wheel all the way down, right? Now you can, like, bring the mod wheel up, and as you bring it up, you get more and more LFO depth, right? So that means you get the whole range of the LFO depth. Me, actually, I like to leave it about 75%. So if, for whatever reason, I already have my finger over here and I'm maxed out, I want a little more, then I, I have left myself 25% more. This only applies to certain situations if you're using the LFO self-resonance. Yes, it does that. I know. <laughs> then the, the amount is governed by different factors. So, back to that. All right, so we get three LFO shapes, wave shapes. We get a, um, what is that? A saw, a, uh, um, ramp, saw, and a, uh, a pulse, a square. Anyways, square is fun for drums, actually. Set the LFO almost all the way up. Set the LFO rate to like this. Pretend that's like a click track sort of. Yeah, that's a kind of multi speed there. Yeah, and when you play the drums along, you'll see it's kind of wild. So, the 
those combined audio signals end up going into the 202, Hello. which means I can both play my 202 stuff. This is really integral to my whole process, the 202. If you've seen the show, you'll see why. I'll show you why in a second. Because it really is a, it looks like a primitive PC. It is a primitive piece of gear. Hold on, low five people. <laughs> but it belongs there. It's got its role to fill. And because of its simplicity, it does things, I'm telling you, that other gear can't do. So, 404, SP404, linear wave sample. Actually, the first device I ever tried finger drumming on, I've only been doing it since like August. I didn't realize I was like a finger drumming super, super monster. But uh, that's because you can't really do it on the 202. It has such limited polyphony. You'll see about that. But the 404, like, you can match all the samples at once. I was blown around. Wait, I was like, holy shit. I wonder how fast I am. <laughs> Turns out fastest anywhere. Okay, so, um, 404, technically, you know, it's superior device in terms of capabilities, um, but, let's see, yeah, well, let's record a quick thing, we're going to do some, a rare thing, we almost never steal beat sounding type stuff, but in order to make this make sense, we'll do it. Oh, you know what, I'll just steal some Master Monkey shit. I've got so much of my own beats now, I could just rip from my own beats. And that was really kind of the idea all along, was to gather up so much content, I would have all my own bits. Okay, so I'm just trolling through Instagram. I'm all over Instagram, by the way. And uh, there's 50 second clips in there, which are cool for, uh, you know, Little tasty tidbits of Master Monkey, so to speak. Let me change the voice. What's up again? Yeah, see, I get bored. I change everything all the time. Okay, there's a beam. It's already kind of a little <laughs> Okay, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal, we're gonna flip a Master Monkey beat just playing off the 15 second loop on the instrument. Man, it's pretty fucking bad beat. Alright, um, so we're gonna rip, rip this, we're gonna big flip it, as most people use their 404s, uh, for that kind of thing. And you'll we'll see why it is inherently advantageous to do such work on a 202, it does something you cannot do on a 404 or anything else, anywhere really. Um, okay, there's nothing else in its class. Alright, here I'm gonna sample, so I got a... Okay, let's see if I have any free ganks here. Alright, there we go. Uh, we're ready to sample. Got a pad ready. When I hit record, it's gonna sample uh, the, the Master Monkey thing, right? It's gonna sample that. Um, and when I hit record again, it's gonna stop sampling it. Alright, so that will be the whole sample. Um, will be record, it'll start sampling, and then I'll hit record this flashing button and it'll stop sampling, right? Um, now I can also hit the pad itself, right, to stop the sampling, but you'll see what happens when I do it. The result's the same either way. It, it doesn't play the sample again immediately, so um, here we go. Okay, so if you got that, and you might notice if you're really a beat head, you probably notice it's a little bit off. And it has been said elsewhere that if you're gonna, when you sample uh, on the 404 and when you mark, there's this tiny, tiny delay, and so you got to actually lead. You got to lead the the sampling. You got to hit the record just a little bit early and you gotta hit the stop record just a little bit early if you're gonna nail it. The 202 is not like that. Exactly when you hit it is exactly when it happens. And uh... Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna sample, I'm gonna repeat that process, but this time I'm gonna hit the pad instead of record to stop the sampling and you'll see what happens. Um, 
So again, we're set up to sample. We're going to start the loop. So we do the recording, and then we, there's like a moment of silence, right, before we can start the sample. Okay, now we're going to do it on the 202, and if you're wondering how the 202 can sample the 404, well, the 404's output goes into the 202, and we're also listening to the 202. Uh-oh. How come there isn't phasing? Well, there is sometimes. In the rare times when I'm sampling from the 404 to the 202, I turn down the volume on the 202 to avoid phasing. Um, but yeah, there will be there'll be two signal going into the into the mixer, so to speak. So okay. So here comes the loop, and it's going through the 404. So I could like mess it up with voice effects or whatever if I wanted. Yeah, we're gonna record it. Did you see that? I just hit the pad that I was sampling on, I hit that instead of record. And it stopped the sampling, and it also immediately played the sample. Yeah, that's right. I forgot around that for a second. So let me do it again, and I won't talk, and you'll see what this means to a performance artist, and why that makes this little sucker a world more valuable for that context. like played it right away. It's kind of hard to tell. This isn't actually how I use it because we don't flip beats here. I'll show you what we usually use this for. This is the usual master monkey um, process and this is why the 202 is right here in front. It's worth it's worth its weight in gold. So all I got to do is start the sample at the right time and hit the samples button at the right time, and it will immediately pick it up and start playing it in the loop. And if I've done everything right, I've started the beats right, I've started the sample right, and I've stopped it, nailed it every time. No one even notices. It just becomes a loop, like immediately. You notice there was no marking. I didn't go edit it or anything. I didn't have to mark it. It was just nailed. Yes, there is a trick to that. The trick is nail it. <laughs> it's not easy, but I've been using the sucker for 15 years, so. Now, some guys put that loop together the traditional beat flipping way that take you three different pads, three recording, you know, sequences and, uh, and a couple of minutes and there will be silence in that process. The beat will stop. The show will stop. I mean, you can feel you got something going, right? Background noise, which is actually what I always have here. That's Sonic Monkey. It's a little app I have that is making that crazy noise all the time. Those weird sounds that sound like airplanes and shit, maybe. I'll turn it down a bit. That's so that there is never silence in case there's those little face, you know, things where there's no sound going. Can't have silence. So, one way of doing that is the beat flipping way. You get the bass one place, and I don't know, somewhere to sample some other place, and other things some other place. 
And then the other way is the monkey way, which is live and real time, direct to the sample. No editing, no marketing, no marketing, no, no marketing either. Yeah, that's why no one knows who the hell I am yet. But, uh, the, you know, like, it's a lot more fun for, it's a lot more fun for you for one thing. It's a lot more fun for the audience to watch. They love it. Like, what the hell, man? It's just came out of nowhere, you know? And, uh, yeah, so my usual process, I'll do that. I'll do a little thing, set that up. Usually with too many drums in it, I gotta stop putting in so many drums, that way I can layer more on top for fun. Um, maybe just a simple boom, and a bit of the wacky noises. Send your Send your I gotta lay, that's a pretty freaking killer loop. So, I, I crank that stuff out with this method, so I'll use that, play around with it for a couple minutes, uh, maybe add some... Send your Actually, that was the, uh, that's the Casio SK-1. We're gonna do a whole show about that one day. So, I know a lot of that is sucker, too. I just run it through the 4F, and that's why it sounds bizarre. Which is great, so... We can replay that, too. Whatever we just did. Run it through the looper, that's fine. Let's see. What is it? set up in the peculiar manner in which they are around here. That's why, so that we can do that kind of crazy stuff. Um, this all runs into the 202. And that allows me to come up with a loop on the fly like that and not have to have uh, silences and stuff and also get the extra wowie, yeah, you know, wowie value of the, hey, you know, the loop came out of nowhere. Mostly only the other performers, beat makers, 202 type people, sampler people get that. Like, well, what the hell just happened? No stops in here, anything, you just made the loop right there. And you get more mileage out of that loop, I'm gonna show you how. Pay attention if you're a sampler guy, uh, SP brethren, I'll show you how to get more loop leverage out of that, more mileage out of that same loop. Here we go. Thanks, Johnny. Johnny Durden's uh, taking off again. You should check out his show, Junkie Durden's. It is a blast. Uh, he's also on Twitter, uh, jo Johnny Johnny Durden or Drunkie Durden's. Just look for Drunkie Durden's. It's all over the place. Uh, you might have to weed through some police reports or something like that. Suspect was Drunkie Durden's. Hey, he's taking off. Have a good time. Um, he's running off to his own show, I think. And like I said, you should check that out. So. SP people, the thing I was showing you there, how to get some more mileage out of that same sample, uh, is with the mark again, so, and a lot of people have seen this, so, this is the usual filter sweep, you can't see it, but I got the filter on up there, and I'm sort of the usual filter sweep, that's no big deal, but in combination with the mark and your brand new mad marking skills, mark on the beat skills, you can do this sort of thing. With the filter sweep, right? Send your 
some of the mileage out of that. Also, if you mark off like an eighth or a sixteenth note's worth, you can swoop down and it sounds really cool. Like, uh, don't overuse that. And you got to stop at the right time, too. So. That way it can, you know, continue at the right place. That, that is an example of how to market in the wrong place. Let's do this again. Send your okay, I'm gonna get the warning up part. We're gonna repeat, sweep that part down. Send your Send your Send your your yeah, that's another example of how to do it wrong. Send your Send your oh, that's a tough place to mark it, but you get the idea. I picked a really bad example. Send your Send your That's what I wanted. <laughs> now a lot of how, how well it comes off is, is going to depend on how you leave it too, like how you break off of it. I'll give you a trick here. If you get it wrong, if you get it wrong, and it's like glaringly obvious that you've gotten it wrong, it's not wrong. You're just switching rhythms for a while. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can if I can do that, if I can replicate that. Oops, hit cancel by, by mistake. Or hit record instead. Oops, I automatically got it correct. <laughs> Sorry. See, it's not a mistake. I'm switching. That's one way to play it off in an improv sort of situation. And you're like, no, it wasn't a mistake. I'm switching to that rhythm. <coughs> Holy crap, what was that? That's one way to do it. Uh, did I say I was going to do the pad banger dojo? I don't know how many people are in this stream. Oh, right, so I don't have a lot of equipment anyways. This is a really cheap laptop up here. It's like 300 bucks. It's I'm very fortunate to have it. And uh, it allows me to run the stream. Without it, I couldn't run the stream <laughs> at all. So I'd get like one person, and that'd be too much. Excuse me. Okay, so if you are out there and uh, you'd like to be a pad banger or aspiring pad banger finger drummer, and uh, you would like to see the Pad-Bugman Dojo quick tutorial, which takes about 10 minutes, maybe, I guess. Uh, pop 
pop in the chat, that's my challenge to you. Pop in the chat or something like that. And I guarantee you I can teach you to be the best finger drummer you know in about 10 minutes. And several months of practice. <laughs> for a normal person, for me it was like three days. Because I don't sleep. If you're a pad banger and you're out there like, man, this is some weak sauce. Well, the velocity curve on this thing only has three levels. They say two levels, but I'm telling you it's three. Look, here's, see, here, I can prove it. Here's when you're pressing on an MPX-8, just like, you're not hitting it, you're just pressing. Okay. Oh, thank you, BW Quillen. I should probably, I should probably turn the, uh, voice effector off. That's not really that much fun for you guys. And maybe back the levels off a little bit. Thank you, BWA man. You know what I should do also is ask people if they like to be identified in the chat. You know, before I was a before I was a lurker performer on Twitch, I was a lurker on Twitch and I didn't like subscribing to people's channels and they'd be all, hey, this person with this name is trying to keep a low profile joined. Don't mention me in the chat. I, I know it's like a routine around here, but anyways, um, so if you don't mind, I think uh, in order to defer to people's uh, privacy, if should they choose to do that, I'll mention people by like their partial name. I'll be like, hey, this B, B man. Ouch. Yeah, that is brutal. What the hell is going on there? Envelope. It's gate. Oh, gate. So yeah, I have this really simple audio chain in here. All right, velocity levels on the MPX-8. People say there's two. I think there's three. Here I am. I'm just pressing one, right? I'm not. I'm not hitting it. I'm not banging it. Right? What bangers do? I'm not banging. I'm just pressing. You did hear something, right? You didn't hear nothing. So we'll call that velocity level zero or one, I guess. And then here's like with a tap. Okay, so that's velocity level two, and then there's a that's a that's a actual bang, right? So that's that's three velocity levels. Or maybe one's like on, and then two velocity levels. I don't know. Anyways, it's really hard to get any um, you know real expression out of this. Um, it's my understanding that ironically, it actually it actually transmits more velocity levels, but internally does not respond to it. So, as I've mentioned uh, elsewhere on a real shoestring budget, um, it's all right. I like it the way that I do things. Uh, it's well suited to doing a, to doing them on on the cheap. So, because it should be about the art and stuff, and not about the gear. says is better. Actually, I haven't warmed up today. I think I'm going to do some finger drumming. So as I do it, if you watch, what I'll be doing is I've worked out a routine of sort of demonstrating how to how to do finger drumming, at least the Master Monkey style of finger drumming, which is somewhat different than other people's because I use my thumbs. That's why I'm fast as shit. Um, uh, so I've worked out a way of sort of demonstrating it you know, over the course of five minutes. So I'm gonna shut up and do that now. Which will give my fingers a chance to warm up. It's a little really cold in here. Thanks for tuning in, by the way, everybody. Uh, it's all manual here. No many more info and in profile. And here we go.
That's a uh, little practice technique for you out there. Okay, now on with the uh, speed stuff.
Okay, hello viewers, if you're still out there. Uh, uh, again with that thing, hold on. All right, there's a sample running. Okay, hello viewers. Hello viewers, if you're still out there. Uh, one, one moment, please. Let me see if I can get back on the mic without blocking the whole scene with my massive schnoz. Okay, so, yeah, that was uh, supposed to be drum warm up, but to tell you the truth, I don't know how long I've been doing it. It's kind of what happens, I just get all spaced out and go totally into that. That's how this happened in the first place. I got my 404 and uh, some guy said, hey man, your finger work is kind of sloppy. And I stayed up for three days straight. And then that happened. Ever since then, I'm the monkey. So a couple of tricks in there uh, that I didn't really cover too explicitly. One of them being this little thing, which is really... And it should be obvious, if you're into finger drumming, you might have picked this up by now. Uh, drummers already figured all this stuff out, guys, so check out what drummers do, man. Study drummers, Jim Krupa, um, people like that, you know. All the old, all the old drummers. I like Mitch Mitchell, he's cool too. Um, anyways, a drummer thing. This, the part of that deep. So we can't do a bounce, a stick bounce, like they do on a, on a, you know, quite on a real drum. But we can do this, right, because we got two fingers. They just got the one stick. So we can do this. See? Let me see if I can move this out of the way a little. Right, okay, so there's the move. All right, this move you already got, right? So you got, if you don't, go back to chapter one and get that. You got to do that first, okay? And this move is the thing you'll do later. This is part of the single hand technique. You're going to do this for a while. Some people can do three. These pads are kind of small. With practice, you can do it, but you're never going to be really fast. You're not going to be doubles fast, you know. But you do this with the two or the three, if you got that down. And then add another one with this, right? So you end up getting a triplet. Right. And you can end it with on something so like da 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 see da 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 right. So you'll be doing this for a while and then for a little flow you can add a da da boom, right? Da da boom, da da boom. It really what works better, at least on this sample, it works better on samples that are short. Obviously, they should have short and a really fast attack so that they can hear it if you get it. And that could be another tip too. So if you're at a bit of an angle, then your hands are slightly below. So you can really get some pressure on it. It's going to be really tough to control it when you do it. So it tends to it tends to get nailed, really. It's not like you can have a lot of build up to it or anything, you know. So if you're going to do some sort of fancy dynamics in front, do it like... Right, because the, the triplet, the hammer is going to be like, it's going to be hammered. If you try to add some you know, dynamics to it, you're going to miss one of them. Usually I miss the third. Right, so, really to be safest, unless you want to miss it, which if you noticed in the demo I did a couple of times. Unless you want to miss it, you better hammer it. Just really hammer it. And don't do it unless you're sure. <laughs> I'll give you another tip too. When you know it's coming up and you're going to do one of those, don't prepare yourself for it, right? And right before you hit it, relax your hands. It'll actually work better. So relax your fingers. Like, relax your fingers, but you're going to keep some energy in your wrist. And when you come down, you're going to go like that. You're going to bring the energy in from your wrist, not your fingers. The fingers have got to be relaxed in order to be supple, right? So that you can do that fast. And <laughs> thank you. B-Man says I'm pretty good. So, and I've discovered if you if you're really good at this, you can do it. You can do the triple like I was I was explaining. Explaining. Then if you got a free, whatever this finger is, you can nail it there, and you get another one like that, right? Now I've tried this before, do a bump, and it's just not as fast because this finger's busy like recoiling, right? So, but this one's available, so you can do this. Sounds like a cricket, huh? That'll be my cricket effect. I'll make a joke. What is the sound of an, uh, an experimental musician? Oh, wait, no. How many experimental... <laughs> God, I screwed that up. How many experimental musicians does it take to screw in a light bulb? Three minutes and 13 seconds of a light bulb being screwed in. That's 
That's the crickets. Can I get an amen out there? Okay, so that's the cricket hit. That's the cricket. I'm going to call that the cricket hit. So this is the two-handed triple. And if you're DJ Zentura, I know he's out there somewhere. DJ Zentura, you should check this dude out. He does one thing that I can't do, which is three fingers on one pad. And he does it pretty damn fast. Not as fast as mine, but pretty damn fast. If I could do it, if I could do three fingers on one, oh man. But anyways, unless you're DJ Zentura, um, this is going to be the fastest that you can do a triplet and then a, and then a quarter. Right? So, so far I use it for a triplet and a quarter. Somehow it works better on a, on a block or something than it does on a snare. I think a snare is too slow. So, it's tough. It's tough to do it more than once at a, a time. So you, you prep up for it, you're like, oh, it's coming. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Da, 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 da. Right? Then prepare yourself for it. Like that. And you can't do it all the time. <laughs> and uh, pretty soon, I got actually, actually a 4 by 4 grade of pads coming, uh, which will be official NPC pad, so I'll be able to finally tag on my videos with MPC, and it will be official. I'll be the fastest MPC in the world. Yes, faster than you, Arab. I know you use note repeat, man. I don't have no note repeat. This is my note repeat. Which means I'll still beat you, right? Because I can turn on note repeat, and I'll hit the note repeats faster than you can hit the note repeat. Right, so I still win. So, anyways. And that's coming up soon. Hope you enjoyed the uh, show. This is the beat produ This is the production talk show. There's a lot more talking in this one. Usually I don't talk and it's all it's all sounds and stuff and me making loops on the fly and shit like that. I hope you were, caught that part earlier. That was pretty cool. I showed some 202 tech off. But and this is pretty typical for the production show. Check the schedules for other information or other shows at other times. And... Uh, I hope you guys uh, had a good time. Subscribe here and all that jazz. I'm on YouTube too. Actually, I'm on YouTube a lot. All these videos end up on YouTube and I'm on Instagram. So check me out there. Die Master Monkey everywhere on Twitter. And I hope to see you guys back soon. The next show is, what day is it? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The next show is Friday at 10 o'clock for the loudest battery powered show on Earth. Oh, there's supposed to be a special effect when I do that. On Earth. On Earth. On Earth. On Earth. On Earth. All right, whatever. We're not big on special effects here. We're big on finger drumming and uh, improv and weird analog gadgetry. And uh, we're pretty, well, pretty good at it. So I hope you guys come back. Uh, I had a good time. hope you did too. And catch you next time here at Master Monkey. Monkey out. Stay true. Stay low, kids. Monkey out. Walking up and down and turn. <laughs> Walking up and down, walking up and down, walking up and down, turning down song, you crazy?